Hey guys, welcome to Bambi TV. So today we're going to check in out one of the recommendation, guys. This is actually Ahmed the Dad in Barbara's place who wanted to challenge him. Hmm. Ahmed the is kind of harsh with his world, and I feel I prefer listening to Zaki Nike because I feel he tries explaining his stuff better, like in a more literal sense. But Ahmed the Dad, have I watched a video where he kind of I'm not saying guys this video is actually sponsored by new chick guys make this possible guys please I feel saying is believing to so check out our store and see if you can leave it there without buying anything just check it out and tell me like check it out call the comment section and tell me what you think I'll pin your comments guys let's get straight into this though begotten means exactly and precisely what it says begotten fathered conceived of the holy spirit jesus was indeed as man born of the spirit born of the father begotten yeah. not made and i'm so glad you made that distinction because it is central to the christian faith and it actually establishes his deity that what is begotten of god is god and what is created of god is not god and that is why the deity of jesus christ Hmm. is revealed in his birth uh, that just as you so eloquently quoted Billy Graham saying that the guys to be honest that actually makes sense because Jesus was begotten by God like it it, it makes sense it, in literal sense like it makes sense but I feel the problem we are having is you classifying Jesus as God, like you saying that the same thing. That's where the issue is. <laughs> Let's get back though. The Holy Spirit overshadowed the Virgin Mary, and 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 uh, you seem to think that someone was upset by the idea that that the Father sired Jesus. Well, I am not upset by that at all. It's absolutely scriptural, and therefore. Uh, I want to ask you to confirm, as I think you have so eloquently said on, on, the, uh, on the videotape, uh, that the distinction between the Islamic religion and the Christian faith, the Christian revelation, is that the Jesus of the Quran is a creature created by Almighty God, whereas the Jesus of the Christian revelation is begotten of God, is an, a manifestation of God in the flesh. And we say, therefore, that Jesus, just as Billy Graham uh, pointed out, uh, it was born as a result of the impregnation by the Spirit of the Virgin Mary. And as Irene Milan pointed out in our, earlier on, we have, therefore, Jesus fully man and fully God. Now, to an unbeliever like yourself, we do not expect that to make sense unless the Holy Spirit gives the revelation, because no one will say Jesus is Lord but by the Spirit. You see in this expression we got John 3.16 I take it you have it in your American standard That's version. right But the RSV You said you don't use it It isn't best known to yourself But Christian scholars 32 scholars of the highest eminence Backed by 50 cooperating denominations I don't know whether you Since you do not claim to belong to any denomination They went and produced this book and the, the testimonies, the praises that which are being heaped upon this translation by Anglican Church newspaper, Church of England newspaper says that this is the finest version which has been produced in the present century. Times Literary Supplement says a completely fresh translation by scholars of the highest eminence. Life and Work says the well-loved characteristics of the authorized version combined with a new accuracy of translation. And the Times says the most accurate and close rendering of the original. They are claiming that this translation goes to the most ancient manuscripts. And in John 3.16, they have eliminated the word begotten because they say these are defects in your present scriptures, most especially based on Jerome's Latin Vulgate, the King James Version, the authors here, 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they say 
that the King James Version, used by a billion Christians today in different, different languages, King James Version. He says, yet the King James Version has grave defects. By the middle of the 19th century, the development of biblical studies and the discovery of many manuscripts more ancient than those upon which the King James Version was based made it manifest that these defects are so many and so serious as to call for revision. So they revised it. That is what the RSV is. 1952. And the word begotten they threw out as a fabrication, interpolation. It was a fabrication. So if this was inspired by God, if God said, I have begotten a son, it would be something. But since it was an interpolation, it's work of people, you know, with vested interest, like you would, you wouldn't use this Bible at all, because it, that it won't suit you. Whatever you are out to preach, it hasn't got it. The ascension is taken out, the verse on the Trinity is taken out, and there still remain those many defects, serious, grave defects, you see, which need certification. So this word begotten is a defect and they took it out. But Mr. Uh, Mr. Dida, yes, if we were going to base our belief on one word, we would be a lost people. There are many other scriptures which I can quote and which I've quoted. No, no, you quote one at a time. It. If you quote one at a time, like this now. That's right. The word begotten we are discussing, I said, look, this word begotten, you have to tell me now that these 32 scholars of the Christian Bible were not scholars. That they were lay people or barbers, shoemakers, that they went and produced this book. These 50 denominations that you don't belong to that, but those 50 denominations are all heathen or they are unbelievers. They went and produced this book and they made, they sold millions of this. And they made a net profit of 11 to 15 million on this book alone. May I quote yes. from this book, yes. The Doctrine of the Begotten Son of God from the Scriptures. All right? The now, word begotten. The word begotten. Yes. Right. The RSV, I do think it's an inferior translation, but it's one you put your faith in. I quote. I didn't. This is your church that have produced it. <laughs> <laughs> your point is. All right. For to what angel did God ever say, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. Or again, I will be to him a father, he shall be to me a son. And in verse 7, of the angels he says, who makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire, but of the son he says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Now, you where was this quotation taken from? Hebrews chapter 1. Right. Quoting the Psalms. Right. So, we go to the book of Psalms, and we find that this was attributed to David. God's Almighty is speaking to David. He said, I will declare a decree unto thee, that thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. God is speaking to David. This day means today I have brought you into being. Begotten. When did God Almighty tell Jesus that I have begotten you today? In the canonical gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Is there a single statement, voice heard from heaven, God saying that I have begotten you today? No. But this is what we read in the book of Psalms and God had spoken those words to David. Now if you take them out from there and you apply them as Paul has done to make God out of Jesus, well that is his business. But what I am saying is this, that Jesus Christ, that is not, it's an amazing thing, that you are not quoting me a single word of Jesus. Whatever you are out to prove, there is not one word I am hearing that Jesus said this or Jesus said that. You're quoting me Paul again and again. You quote, he's quoting scripture from the Old Testament. And I said, when you look at it on the very face of it, he's not talking about Jesus, he's talking about David. Actually, at that point, perhaps we can move on to the next topic and see if we can progress from there. All right. The next one, please, Jonathan. <coughs> hmm. Have you already actually proved his point? Well, he said, John, this is okay, okay. <laughs> like I, I think I should prove this point, but 
I feel when Jesus was baptized, God actually said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And I feel the last video I just reacted to, that was by Zaki Naik. He said that Muslim believe Jesus was born miraculously without a male intervention. So if it's without a male intervention, who be God's God? Who be God Jesus? I feel it's God. You know, it, I actually have this thing. This thing was actually going through my mind today. I was like, there's a way Christians believe. They're, they're like, Catholics, okay, not Christians, though, Pentecostals. They're like, Catholics actually worship Mary, but they claim they honor her. But indirectly, they're worshiping her. The same way we believe Muslims actually worship Muhammad, but they claim they honor him. And the same way we, okay, we, we, we actually own it, we own up to it and we say we believe Jesus is God. So at least we own up to it. But I don't know, don't want to take, but I feel some people actually worship Muhammad in the sense that if someone insults Allah or says something negative about Allah, people don't really get violent. But when you say something negative about Muhammad, Please, peace be upon him. Yes. Peace be upon him. Yes. People actually get violence and I, I don't know why it will go. Let me know the comment section. And I feel Muhammad, um, I feel Muhammad did that actually prove his point. But you see, that scripture, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I have to check by myself though. I, this is actually an old video, I think 1950s. I, I really need to check the scripture out now. If that's one thing about Christianity, some of our Bible is kind of translation. Tra Anyhow, guys, guys, just to like, share, subscribe to my channel, check out YouTube, guys. Still Black Friday. Guys, we'll see you next time, guys.